What's going on, everybody? Yes, it has been a very long time, and this is a very, very overdue video. Hello and welcome. God, it's been a while. I don't even remember the last time I uploaded a video for Minecraft. It, it, it's been a long time. So, for those of you who aren't aware, and I'm assuming it's very little people, we're getting goats! Yay! So, Minecon 2019 just happened about four hours, well, four hours at the time of recording. I don't know how long it's going to take me to edit this and get it out. I'll try to get it out quickly. But, Minecon 2019 just happened. And I took some notes, and I have some clips that, unfortunately, I can't actually show, simply because of licensing issues. They are not my clips to show. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do two things. Uh, number one, in the description, I'm going to post the links to the different time slots of the things I plan on talking about. The next thing is that up in the upper right corner, there's going to be that little pop-up link thingy that will also take you to the section of the clip I am talking about. In the description, I'm also going to put the link to the entire Minecon live stream. I suggest you go watch it. It was it was a lot of fun to watch. They had a couple different games and they had a bunch of community clips from a bunch of different Minecrafters. And I will say that my friend iJevin, who I'm sure everybody friend. knows, let me, let me be made it friend. into the community you are a playlist. And I'm actually very proud of him for that. Not that he needs my approval, but, you know, it's always nice to see friends succeed. And succeeding he is. Now his channel is bloom is blossoming. Bloom, I I don't know, but it's growing exponentially. So I suggest you go check him out. Anyway, back to me. <laughs> so there are a couple things that I wish to discuss, but this is going to be a little different than what I'm used to. Doing. So the way I'm doing this is I have a tour of iJevin's Patreon server, my area, that I collaborate with a couple other builders. So later on at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a tour of that. So look forward to that. I know I did when I was recording it. A lot has changed since the last time I uploaded a video from iGevin's Patreon server. Also one of the things I wanted to talk about, but first, it is long overdue. I have been kind of mentioning it for several months now, but it is here. What is this, you ask? Well, friends, this is my Patreon server. Yes, it is finally, finally finished. After months of talking about it, it is done. Now, yes, I know exactly what you're thinking. This was built by Anna. <laughs> uh, but I did have a big part to play in this. So, without further ado, let's get into the tour of my patron server. So the first thing you're going to notice is going to be where you spawn, which is inside this gigantic room of this gigantic castle. So you come over here, and this is basically just a map of the spawn area. We have my bountiful booty. <laughs> This is a treasure hunt, so to speak. In the mountains, somewhere, somewhere in the map, there will be a chest of wonder. It is for you guys to find. Good luck. 
So we take a right, we come over here, and we have a couple villagers that you can interact with. You know, we got some butchers here, we got a fisherman. Just, you know, your basic trading. We come up. And then you get starter here. You're not going to be going into the world empty and over here across the ridge. I mean, in the enchanting area. Go down. We have food. So, come over here, and you have the community mine shaft. Now, there's nothing special about down here. It's just it just leads down to diamond level, so you really don't have to worry about digging up here. You have your community farms. Every item you need to get started is all up here. Now, please, please don't go overboard up here, guys. You know, everything is here that you need to start your farm. But, you know, don't go overboard with it. Just take, just take what you need. You know? You don't need a lot to get a farm started. You only need a couple of pieces. So I'm going backwards because there's something here that I want to reveal. Right behind me. All right. Bam! It is a giant statue of me. <laughs> oh man, I was actually surprised with this. Of course, by Anna. You know, we were setting this up. There, there was three people that really helped me with this, and I will give them their dues. My good friends, Star Wars, Anna, and her husband Logan. They, they all really, really, really helped me get this started, and I am eternally grateful. For the time and energy they have spent to get this underway for me. Take a nice screenshot there. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, nothing else has really been done. There's paths, there's a shopping area. There's actually two shopping areas. There's one here and then there's one over here. Now, there is a special incentive if you want to become a tier free patron. So you'll notice insert pass for VIP lounge. Now what is that, you ask? Well let's find out, shall we? Pass comes back. What do we have down here? We have a ton of villagers that have already had everything unlocked. All of their books, all of their trades are unlocked. Everything you need to trade here. This is a special thank you from me to you for becoming a tier 3 patron. Now, as long as you are a tier 3 patron, you have access to this server. Or, I'm sorry, you have access to the VIP lounge. All of my patrons will have access to the server. How do you become a patron? Well, it's simple. Head over to my Patreon page, and there you go. There are, three, there are four levels that you can have. How do you get on the server? It's a dollar a month. That's it. One dollar can get you here. That's it. The next level is 10, then 25, and then if you want to become a tier 4 patron, 
at my platinum level, not only will you get access to the VIP lounge, but you will also get a free camera account that you may use for my server and you know whatever else you want to use it for. It will be a, an account that will be set up for you. It will be a totally separate account, you know, because that's how camera accounts work. You will be able to use it on my server, and it will be a second account that you can use for anybody else's server you may happen to be. Also, have another shopping area. We have a ravine town where you can get plots to sell whatever your heart desires. So this is not totally done yet. There are still areas that I want to add and there are still some features that I want to add, but for the most part it's done. Well, that is the tour of Spawn for my Patreon server. I really hope to see you here. All right, so here we are on my Let's Play. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour that I gave of my Patreon server, and I really hope to see you there. I'm really excited to finally have it up and running. And again, I really hope to see you there. So you notice there's been a little bit of an update <laughs> since the last time I played. Well, here is the way I've decided to do things. So iJevin's Patreon server is going to be reset starting October 1st, which is only a couple days away. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to have two series on my YouTube channel. The first one, which is what you're on right now, is going to be one of the series. The other one is going to be iJevin's Patreon server. But I'm going to do it a little differently. So the way I have plans on, uh, wow, the way I have planned, and not speak English for some reason. So, let's try that again, shall we? So the way I plan this out is, iJevin's server, that is going to be more of an episodic event. So, you guys are going to go with me as I tackle solo play, because... Coming up, when he resets, I'm going to go by myself. Nothing against Anna. Nothing against Ruby. They are spectacular builders, and they are awesome, amazing people to share a base with. But the issue that personally I have is, you know, it's, it's hard to put into words. It really is. But I'll try. <laughs> I, I'm the type that I like to do everything myself. And, like, I hate asking for help. I really do. And, to me, if I don't build at all, I kind of feel like I didn't accomplish it, you know? Now, like, I was responsible for all of the redstone on all of the farms. And it was responsible for all of the building. Which, you know, it was the way we did things. So, there was nothing to... You know, it's not like... I don't think she's... A good... Uh, partner. It's just, I want to see how I do things on my own, that's all. Like I said, it's nothing against Anna, and it's nothing against Ruby, and it's nothing against Jade. It's just... The whole time I've been on... Uh, Jevin's Patreon server, I've been partnered with somebody. Now, like, I started out by myself, but it didn't last very long. So, this go around, I think I'm just going to try things myself. Another reason is because I want to change my building style. Clearly, the medieval wood type, it's, it's just not my thing. I, I can't. I've tried, and I don't have the vision that some of these other people have. 
And it's a little upsetting, to be honest, you know? So, I'm going to switch gears, and like I said in the video before this, I'm going to go modern. I'm going to see how that works. I think I have will have a lot more success, personally. Like, I think I'll feel better about my builds if I build in a modern build style, as opposed to a not modern build style. I don't know how else to say that. So, while we are talking here... Why did you get in... Anyway, so we're going to go down here to where I am working on building. So right now I'm just clearing out this area. While I'm clearing this out, we are going to talk about Minecon. Yes. I talked about it for a second earlier when I was going through... The tour, but I wanted to use that little clip to promote my video or to promote my server. So yeah. <laughs> so here I am. Now, before I get started talking about Minecon, which I'll be talking about it for a while, <laughs> I wanted to talk about the other thing. So I said that I will have two series. I already mentioned that Devin's server will be more of the episodic than the occasional update. This will be the occasional update. Whenever I need to talk about what's going on with me or I want to give everybody an update, I'll do it here on this ser on my single player. Progress will mostly be made on stream. So if you want to play along, you know, if you want to help me out, give me some ideas. How much we stream? I don't really have a set stream schedule, which kind of sucks, just because of my job. So weekends are my stream times. Absolutely. You know, Saturday and Sundays. I do my streaming, my heavy streaming, during the week. If I stream, it'll be probably early evening. So, like 5, 6, 7 o'clock. And it will only be a couple hours, unfortunately. And that is just because of my work schedule. I have to get up rather early. And I actually work outside in the heat. And for those of you that don't, no, I recently moved to Southern Alabama, so the heat here is outrageous, and I'm outside in it all day, so it takes a toll. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. I should just yes. yes. Okay. So basically, what I'm what I'm working on right now is the villager trading hall, and the reason I'm doing that is because um yeah, there's 15 villagers in there. <laughs> the breeder is working really well. So I figured we could talk about Minecon while I was digging this out. Alright, so let us get started on Minecon. So, for those of you, for some reason, if you are unaware of what Minecon is, basically Minecon is Mojang's press conference, like announcement, service, well not service, but it, it's basically a thing that Mojang does every year where they just talk about everything Minecraft. You know, they give us the updates on what's coming, and, you know, they just... You have to watch it, too. Just just watch it. So the link for that will be in the... I don't even know what you call them. The little things that pop up on the right. There's the link for it. Go watch it, and then come back. 
All right, so the first thing that they talked about were bees. So bees are not actually, like, people knew about them, you know. When they first announced it, back when the snapshots first came out, people were like, oh, you know, we don't want bees, we want cave updates. Well, we do want cave updates. But that doesn't seem to be happening. They didn't really mention anything about caves. So while they were talking about bees, I actually got pretty excited about it. You know, they're introducing honey, and it's it looks impressive, to be honest. So, I don't want to steal the thunder from Mojang. So, either A, in the description, or B, click the little icon, and go watch the little clip they have about B. So, like, a little quick summary is... It's going to be something else <laughs> that Il Mango can turn a ridiculous farm into. Yep. I think that's how Mojang decides how awesome something is going to be. To be like, hey, how can the Psycraft guys turn something into something freaking outrageous and over the top? That's just my opinion. Though. What do I know? So I watched a clip about the bees, and I think they're going to be a good addition. It's not as in-depth as the bees in, say, modded Minecraft, but I think it will be a nice addition to the mobs that we have already here in Minecraft. They were talking about it, and they had the clip, which... Hopefully you've watched by now. But the clip showed the bees in a glass... I wouldn't say container, but for lack of better words, it was a container. And it showed them, like, going from flower to beehive. Just like bees do. Which I think... I think is pretty awesome of the team to take something that we have in nature and make it interesting, you know? So, the, the one developer, and forgive me for not remembering her name, I am extremely, extremely sorry that I don't remember her name. But, she was talking about how, you know, in real life, when a bee stings you, they lose their stingers, and they eventually die. It's sad. But that's what happens in Minecraft. And they did that specifically because that's how it is. And they wanted to bring bees to Minecraft in all of their glory. Not just parts of their glory, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we need to figure out how we're getting in here first. And then we can worry about other things. We want. I know we want to go... Deeper. Because I want this to be two levels. Two equal levels. So, dig down a little bit here. And while we're digging down, we can continue talking about them. So, with the introduction of bees, they also introduced a new block to the game that... I am extremely, extremely excited about simply because of its properties. So we all know about the slime blocks, right? And what they do. You know, they kind of bounce you and all that good stuff. Well, with the addition of bees, Mojang added the honey block, which works the complete opposite way a slime block does. The honey block is a very sticky block. You can't run on the honey block. You can't jump on the honey block. And in the clip, it shows her sliding down the honey like a slide. So it, it kind of like it kind of looks like a um, ladder, 
but it's honey. So, like, how freaking cool is that? I think this is... Uh -huh. Um, no, we'll need to go down a little bit more. Yeah, one more. Because then each row can have a three tall there so we can get up. Yeah. Alright. Yes. Alright. I know I keep going off topic and going from you know, between Minecon and my game, but, you know, my attention sucks. <laughs> Alright. So, the next thing they talked about were editor tools. And, while this isn't a big thing for me, because I'm not much of a content creator, it gives people that develop on the back end, you know, the people that actually develop the mod packs, it gives them so much more options. So, I, I'm not really going to get into the editor tool simply because of the fact that I wouldn't even know how to explain it to do it justice. So, just, just go watch the clip. That, that's the only thing I can say. Just go watch the clip, please. The next thing they talked about that I found interesting were target blocks and basically they're exactly what they sound they're, they're, it's a block that looks like a target but what makes this block so cool is it gives off a redstone signal when it's hit so like you know you would shoot it with an arrow or a crossbow and depending on where you hit the block depends on how much of a signal it gives out so, like, the closer you hit to the bullseye, the, the more signal. You hit a bullseye, you get a full 15 strength. Like, how cool is that? Alright, so, the big thing that I got out of this was the nether update. Crap. I got two pickaxes for a reason. Yes, they are finally updating the nether. It has been so long since the nether got an update. Dubbed the nether update. I don't know if that's the official name for it, but that's what they called it. So let's go with that. So in this update, they said that there are going to be several new biomes. Yes. The nether is finally getting biomes. I'm actually really happy about that. Modded has had that for a while, and that was something I really, really liked, and I'm going to assume they draw inspiration from that. The two biomes that they announced, and I'm not 100% sure if that's going to be all of them, or if that's just the two they talked about. But the first one is the Soul Sand Valley. Which looks like it's going to add a couple different soulstone blocks. Because they had stalagmites and stalactites. So, I'm assuming there is going to be some type of block update for soul sand. Which, I think is going to be actually pretty awesome. The next one they talked about was the nether wart forest and i gotta tell you of the two the netherworld forest is my favorite like it <laughs> it really is awesome and i don't have any sticks i need to make some more torches so let me run up and grab some sticks real all right so they talked about the nether getting an update and they also introduced the piglins and the piglin beasts. Yes. They are mobs that now spawn in the nether. 
They also mentioned that for the first time, you will now be able to actually live in the nether because the piglin beasts are a viable food source. How cool is that? I kind of need to fill this. I'm actually going to end up replacing all of this eventually, which is why I haven't really worried too much about taking all this out. This is all going to be concrete eventually, but I first need to figure out a bunch of things. How I'm getting in and, <laughs> and all of that good stuff. All right, so right now, let's do some basic planning. Cobble. All right, so this will be the actual villager selves. So we'll do do every two. Okay. But like, I also kind of want to do in the middle. So we want to have a three block wide gap in the middle, or like as a walkway, you know. So they're going to come right here. And actually what I'm thinking I'm going to do is they're going to come through the top and they're just going to, like I'm going to send them to where I want them to be via minecart and they're just going to kind of fall down. Or we'll just kind of put a wall there. All right. So the next thing, you know, we talked about the piglin beasts. The next part of it is... The piglin themselves. Now, they didn't go into a lot of detail about them, but from what I've seen, they kind of resemble a pigman, like a zombie pigman, but different. And apparently, they are going to have a trade system as well, but not like the villager trade system. So she was talking about how it's going to be more of a barter system. Wait, what happened? Why did it not line up? And why did it line up over here? Houston, um, what did I do? That's what I did. Okay, I'm an idiot. Fix this real quick. I wonder how it didn't line up. But anyway. So they said it's going to be like a barter system. So basically what will happen is... Again, I don't know if this is like concrete and permanent. But the way she said it was that... Like, instead of having a, a GUI like the villagers do, basically what will happen is, like, you'll throw the item at them, and then they'll throw the trade item back at you. So, there we go. This. That'll be three. And that'll be three. Okay. So yeah, you'll throw the item at them, and then they'll throw the item back. So, you know, it's kind of like a what-do-you-want-here thing. Instead of, okay, let's, you know, we'll trade peacefully and all that stuff. <laughs> I kind of like that idea, though. You know, it's different. So this is where we're going to come in the area. Right here. Gonna be the entrance. This will actually have a second floor around it. Speaking of floor, probably think about doing that. Um.
There we go. Okay. Yeah, this will have a second story. It'll be right there. That means we'll have to dig up one. Ah. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Forgot about the floor. It's six tall. It's six tall. But I forgot about like the floor taking up a block. Oh well. I'll worry about that later. And I'll worry about that later too. Okay. So the next thing, and probably what people are watching it for most, is the biome announcement. So they selected the next biome that we are going to get updated. And I'm assuming that you know by the title that the Mountain Biome won. And Deb said something. It was, it was the funniest thing he said. He said that the snow is going to be snowier than the snowiest snow. Or the snowiest snow since snow. I forget how he quoted it, but yeah, you'll just have to watch the clip. It was it was hilarious. <laughs> Alright, so that comes to the conclusion of my Minecon update so i apologize that we weren't working in this area too much but like i said this let's play is going to be more of a live stream type thing so if you want to follow along and keep up with my progress then you should come over and watch me stream on twitch link on the screen now you like that, right? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. All right. So before I end the video, I wanted to give you guys a tour of iGevin's Patreon server like I had promised. So without further ado, let's get to his server. Welcome back. Before we do the reset, I wanted to go and give everybody a tour, and I have no idea what this is. I'm assuming Anna is building something here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, first off, the castle really hasn't changed much. It's... The inside has changed, and we will get to that momentarily. But first, I want to give you a little bit of a tour of the outside. So, the first thing that I want to show you guys is this lighthouse. This lighthouse actually houses our... Zero tick sugarcane farm. Now, I did build a gigantic 128 piece, I guess you could say, farm underground. But it just, it was not keeping up with the demand. So, ignore that orange block. I'm having some, I don't know what it is, but I have issues with these orange blocks. It's they, the glass turns orange for some reason if you can see. In order to get rid of it I have to reload the resource pack which is the default resource pack and for some reason I'm still having this problem. But anyway, so during the day you know it's a normal lighthouse but at night we have a fully functioning lighthouse. So the way it works is there's just a redstone clock Tied into a daylight sensor. It's something fancy. Um, hello. What's wrong? So, the next thing we have is a simple yet effective. Where's the button? Cocoa bean farm. Hit the button, the cocoa beans pop up. We replant. Voila, we have cocoa beans. The other area, the other big building right here. This is the storage for all of the, well, not all, but a few of the automatic farms. The giant sugarcane farm that's underneath, the smaller sugarcane farm that's right here, and then the slime farm. So, we will head over here. This is the sugarcane farm. This is the small one. 
Yes, this is a small one. <laughs> Again, all of these buildings were built by Anna. I did the redstone, she did the building. They all look freaking spectacular, don't they? This is the iron farm. This is also very loud, but this is the melon and pumpkin farm. Well, so if we go in here, it got to the point, like, we have tens and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of melon and pumpkins, like as you can see here. So what I did was I created a system to where it will bypass the filter altogether. Whenever this light turns on, that means this entire system is full. Turn the light on. We turn, or sorry, when the light turns on, click this switch, and then every melon that comes down gets converted right to bone meal. And the same thing with pumpkins. It gets converted right into bone meal. Because, you know, we have far too much melons and pumpkins. The next little thing that you guys see right here is just a table for all of our horses. Because we kept them in the castle, but the problem was we have we kept having to go in and out of it every time. And it, it was just, we got tired of running through the horses. So, this building right here houses our villager breeder. So, as you can see, the villager breeder works. Now, this is a 1.14.2 design. My testing shows this will not work in 1.14.4 because I took a screenshot. We are still on 1.14.2. So, when the server resets, we will upgrade to 1.14.4 as far as I know. This is our dual super smelter. One for smokers, one for blast furnace. And this guy's name is Jeff. Over here, we have our library. Nothing fancy, just, you know, a cool looking library. Okay. Storage chest back there. Up here, we just have more bookshelves. Nice looking library. Again, built by Anna. Here, the barn. We have our pigs. We have tons of chickens. Outside this door, the cows. And on the other side of the wall is the sheep. Now, what's cool about this is underneath all of, underneath the floor there is a redstone system here what that redstone system does was underneath all of these carpets there are hoppers they all lead down to here so whenever a chicken lays an egg the system then brings it around there's a water elevator that brings it up in here when this gets full it will turn this light on when this light turns on, turn on the switch, and we have an egg shooting machine. It shoots all the eggs out. I think that's pretty neat. So right here, we have a, a, a lot of cats for some reason. I don't remember this many cats being in here, but it happens. And then here, we have our semi-automatic farming system so it's automatically farmed but we have to go back and manually plant it so everything ends up in here and then we just go back and we replant everything and i'm out of eat real quick All right, so the next thing is we're going to go over here. So we had a lot of plans that we wanted to do for this entire area, 
But the problem is we just we just didn't have the time and we came up with these plans way too late. So this up here was going to be like the military area, like the barracks and stuff like that. And if you come in here, we have a bunch of pillagers. But they are friendly, Jacob, the peaceful villager, Jeremy, James, Joe. No, there aren't any upstairs. So, I'm sure everybody's aware of this by now because it's nothing new. But there is a system. Well, I don't know if you call it a system. But there is a thing. I don't even know what to call it. To where... If the pillagers run out of arrows and their crossbow breaks, they become peaceful. They don't attack you. Just kind of run around with their arms held down like they have their axes. They really don't. I think that's kind of funny. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to come underground here. This is my... 32 furnace array that is powered by a zero tick bamboo farm. Let's. Oh, yeah. There's no way around there. And I don't have any of my tools because I didn't think I did. yeah. So basically, I did a video about this. Uh, link will be in the description if you want to check it out. But basically, it just, it's powered. There's a system to where it detects if there's anything in it. If not, it turns it on. Earlier, I mentioned a giant. Wow, did you get in there? Seriously, how, how did you get in there? There are no spawnable points in here. I'm not sure how you get in there. But anyway, <laughs> it's is 64 blocks wide. Yep, that's a lot of sugar cane. The next thing is, with this giant dig, we needed somewhere to store everything. So, yeah, we I kind of built this. Obviously not finished yet. So, the next thing that we're going to look at is going to be the giant project that I started but never even got to finish. So, another giant dig. This was going to be a creeper farm. As you can see... Do not have a lot of this dug out at all. What happened ended up happening was we ended up making a temporary keeper farm and pretty much did everything we need. So we really had no need to build the giant one, plus I just we neither one of us had time to dig out the six million blocks needed. And the last time we got it dug out so fast is because everybody helped. There's really nobody in the community now. So, once the reset happens, it'll be totally different. So, we got the outside of the castle all taken care of as far as tours. So, let's work on the inside now. Now, I don't think much has has changed too much, but it's been a while since I've done a video about this. So, let's go ahead and... We'll just go ahead and cover everything. So, firstly, we have the different armors here. Got some beds. A tiny smelter. Basically, for stuff like this, where we didn't want to put it into a huge array, but we wanted to do a little bit here. So, we have a nice little aquarium. We have our nether portal room. Come over here. We have a bone meal maker. Our cactus farm. Right here. Just a simple cactus farm. We have an AFK fishing area. And if we come over here, we have another one. That way Anna and I can both AFK fish. Come over here to our Tree of Hope. Oh yeah. Our storage. Our villager trading hall. We have a lot of villagers now. As you can see. And then we have more storage. Come over here. Our map is in the floor. How freaking cool is that? And then what's down here? 
Oh, more storage. And what about here? Even more storage. Yeah, we needed a ton of storage. We still have a lot of stuff that we haven't put in these storage bins yet, but, you know. So if we come back under the stairs, we have our enchanting area. Come up here, and we have the wall of heads. So, so far, these are all of the heads that we have managed to get. Pretty nice collection. Up here are the bedrooms. As you can see, nothing fancy. I don't even think I put anything in mine. This is just another way up and down. This was my doing. Right here is an automatic, well, somewhat automatic farm system. So the way it works is click the lever. Everything gets destroyed by water, sent into hoppers, and taken down. And there are a bunch of different levels. Go this way, actually. Each level can be whatever you want. So we got beetroot right here. We got potatoes here. And this is the bamboo farm. So this produces way more bamboo than we need. It's actually a really simple farm that I overcomplicated with redstone. <laughs> Why? Because, well, I wanted to try. So basically what happens is there is a single stalk above here, which actually you can see the dirt where it is. So that grows. When that triggers, it triggers the water. You know, it it's it's a very overcomplicated farm, but I wanted to do it, so I did. Everything then comes down into the hopper. Or the chest rather. Then everything flows into here. It's a pretty simple system, to be honest. If we look out to the left over here, you can see the temporary creeper farm. It is, I believe, two layers, and it produces more gunpowder than we know what to do with. And I think one of the main reasons for that is simply because there aren't that many people on buying rockets anymore. So, before the video ended, I just wanted to give you guys a little update on what was going on and let you know how things were happening. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour. I will see you guys.